Hello, I'm Douglas Lowe. Uh, I'm a research software engineer working at the University of Manchester. And I'm here today to talk to you about training material that we are developing for teaching CWL and workflow thinking. This is a large collaborative effort. Uh, listed here are the main contributors. However, this list is not definitive. There have been many other contributors at the hackathons run while developing this material, and we'd like to thank them too. This is a progress report for this project and also the sales pitch, as we're hoping more in the community might help us with this material in the future. The aim of this material is to teach workflow thinking to researchers in a manner which is engaging and relatable. We have chosen to use software carpentry methods for this. Uh, we're using real world examples to help motivate the students with interactive teaching materials. And this is so that they can relate these materials to their own work and it helps them to imagine clearly how they might use the tools. Because a lot of teaching is done uh, virtually these days, we are aiming to fit these materials into four hour sessions. Uh, such length of session is about the maximum length that people can concentrate comfortably online. Consequently, we are looking to create two of these sessions for this material. The first will cover basic workflows. Uh, we won't be going into too much detail on optimizing or writing new tools. Instead, we'll be aiming to get researchers quickly into running uh, workflows. The second session will cover more complex workflow functionality and also the basics of creating tool descriptors. The development of these lessons was started as part of the Elixir project by Elixir Netherlands and Elixir Greece. In early 2021, several hackathons were organized. These focused on creating the user profiles and determining what learner outcomes were desired for this material. They also started to build the lesson material and registered the lessons with the Software Carpentry Foundation. From September 2021 onwards, a smaller team, myself, Anne, Gerard, and Michael, have been working uh, on this material. We have pared down the number of lessons by grouping the learner outcomes produced by the early brainstorming sessions into a number of logical subsets. These lessons have then been split across two sessions mentioned previously. Our current development focus is on the first of those sessions uh, named at novice users. Firstly, a bit of background on the Software Carpentry Foundation. This was set up in 1998 and is dedicated to teaching researchers the computing skills they need to get more done in less time and with less pain. Their teaching philosophy is that lessons should be interactive and use real world examples to motivate learners. Each les lesson taught should have a focused number of learning objectives so students aren't overwhelmed with information. And lessons should focus on usability rather than getting bogged down in technical details. The aim is to teach enough to get researchers started with the technology and to empower them to later expand on this knowledge. The teaching material is web-based and distributed under the Creative Commons license, so it's freely available for all to use. The software code is markdown based as the example code on the right shows. This makes the technical side of developing your own teaching material relatively painless. They also provide an incubator service for those who wish to write their own lesson material. This facilitates the development process, providing space to host these lessons, and also a way of connecting with other software carpentry developers. Here we have summarized the learner profiles that have been put together for this material. The full profiles are available at the link given on the right. The common features of these learners are that they're all relatively early career researchers with a good domain knowledge and they've built or at least inherited analysis methodologies that they want to scale up and also make more robust. They may not be familiar with workflow design and principles, so we should try and cover these in the material, uh, especially in the novice material, but they may, uh, 
but also in the second lesson as well. Although there is a research software engineer in this group, most of them aren't particularly computation focused. And so we shouldn't assume when we are teaching these materials that our learners have much previous programming experience. Our baseline should be that they just have basic shell experience. The lesson structures for these two courses are summarized here. Note that these may change as we test the material and see what fits well into the four hour sessions that we are planning. The novice course will begin with some motivation on why we should use workflows for structuring scientific methodologies and why the common workflow language is a better workflow language for doing this than say shell scripting. We will introduce CWR workflows using a single work step workflow and show the differences to a shell script, hopefully hope highlighting some of the advantages of using CWL. We will then move on to simple multi-step workflows, showing how data flows between each step in the workflow, uh, controlling the workflow progress. Once the students have learned about basic workflow structures, we move on to talking about where they can find existing resources for use in their own workflows and how they can integrate these into existing workflows. And finally, in the novice course, we will discuss uh, the common errors that users might expect to see while creating and using a workflow and how these can be fixed. So we'll be trying to teach them how to read the error messages that CWR learners will provide. The structure of the intermediate course is in a bit more flux still than the novice lesson. This is, that said, these are the lessons that we are considering including. Uh, so we will continue with the emphasis on workflow thinking uh, beginning with a more work, complex workflow structures, such as using conditionals for building dynamic workflows, as well as parallelizing the workflow using the scatter and gather functionality. We will then cover nesting workflows and how the information flow through these needs to be controlled. We then change focus onto the construction or preparation of tools for use within a workflow with an introduction to scripting for CWR as well so that you can create your own workflow descriptors. And finally, we will cover some of the details needed for running workflows on other systems such as HPC or cloud platforms. That will by necessity not be very comprehensive as such lessons could cover a full four hour session by themselves, but we'll try and cover some topics such as setting resource requirements or whatever CWL runners are available and how to use those. The novice course material is already available on the uh, software carpentry incubator. The address for this is at the top of the slide and below are a couple of screenshots from that material. On the left is an introduction to the workflow that, is, uh, that will be used for the lesson material. This is an RNA sequencing analysis and will be applied to samples from the human genome. This is based on material from the Curie Corporation that they use for introducing users to the Avedas platform. On the right, we have some example code from the tutorial using the fast QC process for our single step workflow example. As we progress through to multi-step workflows, users will then be adding on subsequent mapping and analysis steps to their workflows. So we are planning to start uh, testing sessions for novice course uh, this spring. These are the sessions that we have planned so far. In collaboration with EBI, we are looking to organize a small group trial of the material. Hopefully this will occur in March. Uh, this will go through the whole course and we'll look at how well it flows and where we need to make adjustments. At the start of April, there is the UK collaborations workshop at which we will have been given a 30 minute workshop slash session. We were hoping to get an hour, but they had received a lot of that workshop applications this year. So we are going to cover within that slot, a focused subset of the novice material and going to use it as an introduction to CWL and to advertise these courses that we are developing. Uh, because the audience will be research software engineers, we're going to be expecting more experienced programmers on this uh, workshop.
workshop. So we'll hopefully get some people with a bit more experience with the software carpentry teaching methods who will be able to ask for advice on the material. Finally, we will be asked, we have been asked to submit a training course proposal to the UK N8 Digital Health Programme. This is a PhD programme based at eight universities in the North England. If this goes ahead, then we will likely run the full novice course in May to interested PhD students. Uh, so, as I said earlier, we're looking for uh, volunteers to help us with developing this material. Uh, we would welcome any offers of help for developing, testing and reviewing of the material. For reviews and tests, there's a link here for the issues page on GitHub. If you want to have a look over the material, you can add any feedback or suggestions there. If you'd like to help with writing material, um, we need more work on the lesson text and structure. When writing software carpentry material, the code coding examples usually come first, and after this, uh, the descriptive text is added. And what we really could do with is some expansion of the discussion and descriptions around the code, covering both technical advice and also scientific background for the processes that the users are running so that they can really understand what's going on. The hardest part of writing software carpentry material is developing questions which focus on the core learning objectives for that lesson and assist the trainer in identifying any misconceptions that users might have developed. As an example of how to do this, I've included a question here for the Python course that I use in my teaching. It's a multiple choice question, testing the learner's understanding of how Python string objects are indexed. For each of the wrong answers uh, here, they catch a common error that learners make about indexing so that the trainer can quickly identify where the learner may have got wrong and correct their misunderstanding. We could do with doing similar uh, for our CWL course. So any help on coming up with good questions which will perform this functionality would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all for your time and apologies that I can't be here at the conference myself, but Michael Crusoe will be available later to take any questions that you might have on this material.